Welcome to another episode of the Miles Offside Podcast, where we talk a little bit of football and a whole lot of Mandalorian Season 2. My name is Oscar Puente, also known as Footy From Afar, and with me, as always, are my co-hosts, FPL champion Chuck Bailey and super producer Ian Stimson. Fulham won a game. What? Did they? I'm not watching. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is what we asked for. I don't think this is what anyone... A uh, Burnley the Derby? A Burnley... <laughs> Are Burnley the baddies? <laughs> Sheffield United? Uh, Do we not know anymore? Hmm. Alexander Asistrovich, though. Hey? Hey? Oscar, hmm? please, please, Oscar. No, I'm not taking Someone that. Someone's going to jump in save me from no, myself. No, I don't often ask you to take that control, but please, <laughs> wrestle this. Fuck, you know. All right, well, huh? we are the Miles Offside Podcast. Thank you for joining We're us. We're not normally this shit. Oh, well, that's not true at all. Mm. We are exactly this don't shit. Don't mind checks, we can't catch. <laughs> um, if you are joining us for the first time, thank you. We are happy to have you. Uh, you chose a relatively boring Premier League weekend to come, but that's okay. We're still happy to have <laughs> you on board. <laughs> Um, those of you that are returning, thank you. We love you. Please share with a friend, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we'll kick things off as we always do with our <coughs> rapid, rapid, rapid fire news. Gentlemen, our top story this evening: The Athletic have conducted an investigation into comments on posts by Premier League accounts, finding that over half of the posts analyzed from six clubs had porn bots among their most liked comments. <laughs> Manchester United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester City, Tottenham Hotspur, and Leicester City were the sides in question. It is said that the clubs are recruiting specialist teams to lead the crackdown on bots spamming their posts. Um, have either of you applied to be on the specialist teams to click on porn bot links? Or you, Wait, so you just have to watch porn? I'm assuming yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, you just you just paid to test the links, and you're watching forty minute videos. Well, you got to see it all the way through, haven't you? You got to see it. Forty minutes. What do you want? Premium? Jesus. <laughs> pay well, pay it, for your porn, guys. Oscar, at his age, it takes a while. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> That's just the warm up. <laughs> I can't really see uh, that being that being advertised on the social media pages of these uh, accounts. Any experience required? Nah. They do have a screenshot of a Chelsea post. Uh, says it's from last week's Champions League. Our five forwards in the squad for this week's Champions League, and presumably a picture of the five squads. The top comment was by Laura Kitty twenty one. Says warning: Do not view my story. And it had four hundred and ten likes. It is the most liked comment on Chelsea's <laughs> Instagram post. Uh, are we sure this is a problem, oh, or is it, it just is. a bunch of horny fans in lockdown stuck at home all the time? Wank is gonna wank. <laughs> Wank is going to wank. All right. I think we can't top that comment. So let's move on to our next big story. We have Zinedine Zidane denies that a problem between Real Madrid pair Karim Benzema and Vinicius Jr. is occurred. Um, the Spanish champions had struggled in the first half of their Champions League group game against German opponents. Uh, against their German opponents. Yeah, there we are. That's following an opening defeat to Shakhtar Donetsk. There we go. Um and then Benzema, I don't know if you guys saw this, told his teammates not to pass to Vinicius anymore because... He swears on his mother. He's playing against us. Exactly. <laughs> that was sus, wasn't it? Oh, man. Good vibes. Good times party vibes. Oh, man. Have you ever heard of a teammate telling... Or have you ever heard of a player telling someone to not pass to their own teammate before? I've been on a team with players that once they got the ball, you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I've been that player. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How bad do you have to be that Karim Benzema is like, oof, this guy is, yeesh, uh, yikes. That's no come good. Come on now, <laughs> Karim Benzema was good. Nah, Benzema <laughs> was really important in a couple of important teams, but you know, hashtag Bants, that's what we do on this podcast. I blame, it's Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale was the glue. <laughs> yeah, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Holding it all together. When did this conversation happen? Like at half time or something? Yeah, it got caught, it got picked up by yeah. the cameras in the tunnel, which is how <laughs> everyone knew about it. Oh, in the tunnel? In the tunnel right before halftime. So the manager wasn't privy to this conversation? because No, no, no. He came this... out afterwards and says, they're fine. They're still friends, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. But if you're the manager and you hear that conversation at half time, it's like do you, you've got to jump mm. in and go, no, no, do pass. He's, he's a member of the team. I need <laughs> all my players, or you hook the guy and just support Benzema. I don't know. Just it seemed weird that that I, I'd heard that was at half time, and then like everyone's still playing. I was like, hmm. 
you probably want to sort that problem out, don't you? No, I mean, we have a fourth podcast host. So we just never let him talk. He's been on here for yeah. years. You know, just don't pe- don't hey. throw it to him ever. No question. Shut up, Craig. <laughs> All right, well, moving on to the next story. We have Barcelona president and the entire fucking board, by the way. Joseph Bartomeu has resigned under increasing pressure, but he said that the club had accepted proposals to join a European Super League. So there's kind of two angles to take here, gentlemen. The first one is that Messi seems to have won out his battle against the board and against the president. Um, so they are all resigning and leaving. So let's go ahead and start off with that one. How are you? What do you guys think about that? Do you think it's maybe because Barcelona is nearly five hundred million in debt? That might have something that? to do with it. <laughs> might be. Hmm. Mm. And like three hundred million of that was Antoine Griezmann. So <laughs> that's, yeah. not, that's not great. And the other hundred million was them taking their dividends. Yeah, and Messi's wages, which are not insubstantial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, fifty yeah. million a year. It comes yeah, out that to really could have sorted themselves out by just letting him go. I mean, they're all firing <laughs> shots, and PK's got involved, and Messi's obviously, you know, led the charge as bit. Well, not really necessarily led the charge, but just by virtue of the fact he's the most famous footballer in the world, probably is. Um, yeah, it's a fucking shit show. It is a mess over there, and their transfers have been. I would say ever since they sold Neymar, it has been a marked. Downward spiral of was like, he the glue? Was he the glue? Apparently, holding yeah. Barcelona together. <laughs> oh man, it's the opposite of Coutinho. Liverpool turned the Coutinho money into one of the best teams in Europe, and Coutinho fucked Barcelona. And Coutinho that was, what <laughs> went to Barca, sucked. Went to Bayern on loan, was okay. Then went back to Barca, sucked. And now I don't even know where he is. Is he still at Barca? Technically, someone Google it. C O U T I N H O Philippe Coutinho. He is a Barcelona player. There you go. We Yay. know things. We know things. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia does. So, uh, do you think that, like, I, so I guess first of all, how crazy is it that not only the president but the entire board of directors resign, but potentially they'll be leaving La Liga to join the European Premier League Super League? European Super League, where they'll finish bottom and be like, oh shit, we still can't make money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it really is much more so the rest of the big European clubs driving that than it is the Premier League ones, because like their TV deals, they just don't make nearly as much money and they're starting to not be able to compete. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also the more irrelevant clubs out of the bigger ones now. You know what I mean? Like, it's Manchester United and Liverpool seem to be the ones that are driving it the hardest. But I think that's because they're the ones who are most at danger or, you know, are worried that they've peaked already or don't have the same kind of strategies that teams like Man City and Chelsea have to inject cash in. So that's why they want to preserve. Like, when was the last time Man United won the league? What, 2010? 2011. The year before. 2011. Yeah, we were 2010. We set the record for goals, 103 goals in... A season the first to break a century yeah shout out yeah um and then they won in 11 city were 12 um who was 14 were we 14 no we were 15 i don't know we can look this up or just keep talking yeah no <laughs> we'll just keep talking um so it's nearly this will be what the 10th season then if that is the case question mark that they've won the league which means that's basically an irrelevance now liverpool it was their first time winning the premier league uh, last season and so it seems like they've just come close they're like well now we don't want to drop off too much um, as one of our teams currently sits in 15th in the league and 19th on expected points um, <laughs> <laughs> that we need to secure this European Super League so we can be yeah yeah and you'll just look like twats mate when you're getting buried at, like Manchester United fans are gradually turning blue anyway and moving to the other side of the city like do you honestly do you honestly think that if they go into a european super league and every single year they finish 18th out of 18 17th out of 18 18th out of 18 and the glazers keep shipping out the money and they don't do anything that honestly that will protect their revenue no you silly I don't know, man. I think it's the TV deal in that, like, that European Super League in the international TV rights would fetch obscene money, like, much more than even the Premier League is making now, which is already obscene money, right? So, like, Mm. I don't think it's as much about, like, 
table finish or how good they are or how marketable even they are as much as like but that, that, the that affects marketability. marketability that that affects marketability no, absolutely like you don't how many people like outside of West Brom do you see walking around in West Brom shirts you know what I mean or in different countries or in anything like that Man United is a huge global brand for yeah. a reason yeah, yeah, yeah. and that reason is because they fucking dominated for a long long time and that's why we're still seeing the after effects of this Ten after 10 years they last won the Premier League you can ruin that legacy by if they spent like four or five years just being the worst you've de- let, let, let's say for sake of example I don't know the Super League happens in two years yeah 2024 I think is the date I've seen the most 2024 because that's okay, when the TV then. rights run out for the Champions League cool so 2024 at that point would then make it 13 years since Man United then won the title if they then finish bottom for another five years in that one you've got an entire generation of people who in their lifetime what what have Man United been and if you don't think that doesn't have a long-term effect and therefore negate you you know what I mean these these are the kind of things that because like you say kids kids pick a team to support and that'll happen I mean I know that Man United obviously invest a great deal in sort of especially the Far East and stuff. But yeah, kids pick a team to support and they're not going to pick Man United if they're not getting consistent European success. That that will, it will filter, it will filter through. Chuck's absolutely right on that. It will filter through eventually. I 100% agree with what you guys have said. I feel I should provide a counterpoint just to play devil's advocate because that's kind of no, my favorite red, activity. Red, de- red devil's, red devil's advocate. advocate. Yeah, exactly. Um... <laughs> To which I would say that Liverpool didn't win the league for 30 years and they are still a globally massive team. So like, you know, there's there's like levels, obviously, like you don't see as many Liverpool fans in the US as you do Man United. So I think that's not a coincidence, but they didn't yeah. fall off. the You're map absolutely either. right. But in the in the early 90s, when I was sort of getting into football, there was way more Liverpool fans because of the uh, because of what they've done in the 80s, you know, 80s. That was Kenny Dalglish's team, right? He was like a player manager yeah, or some so, crazy shit. And, and their level of success during the eighties just meant it filters through. So I I know what you're saying because it's it, it's global levels we're talking about here, but it it does matter. Um, I am right though, aren't I? In the fact that this European Super always. League is uh, I am always right is uh, slated to replace the Champions League. Un entirely unclear, entirely right, okay. unclear because like so as of the the situation now is that in a few years. Their plan is to rework the Champions League completely. They're going to make it bigger so that the group, there's more groups or there's bigger groups. Um, there's going to be one extra knockout round and the TV rights are going to get renegotiated. And a lot of the bigger teams in Europe are seeing this as an opportunity to be like, well, if this is all getting renegotiated and all this, all these structural changes are coming in anyway, what if instead of doing that, we make our own thing? You know, actually, I want to hear about the creation of the Premier League. From, we're going to completely derail because the matches were mostly boring this weekend. So let's get into this. This is rapid fire news, right? <laughs> yeah. When the Premier League was created, and obviously, Chuck, yeah. you were like super born, but Ian, you eight were... Eight months old. I was only eight. You, yeah, but you remember stuff. How, what was that like? Like, how did that go down? Well, that's hard to say because I was eight years old. So whether I was aware of media, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> okay, you know. fair enough. Yeah. Um, but... I do remember it being huge, though, because I remember, like, we, you know, we got Sky that year. That was one of the driving forces why we got Sky, because my dad was, like, wanting to watch Premier League football. You know, I remember there being, I do remember there being lots of hubbub about it, as much as an eight-year-old can take uh, that sort of thing on board. Um, And I'm... I mean, more looking back on it now, you see that there were definitely people who were like, this is the this is the death of football. This is all about money, mostly because obviously football was getting taken, not that it was on the same levels, but football was getting taken away from terrestrial TV to mm. be put into a paid subscription model. And you're, you, you are right. It, it was absolutely seismic, but it still happened. You know, it was seen as football... There were there was definitely people who were seeing it as football getting taken away from working class access, you know, but it still happened. And there is a there is a inevitability about this European Super League. Oh, absolutely. Make no mistake. Within ten years, Chelsea will not be playing the same schedule that they do now. No, and I don't I don't think no. 
you know, for for all I said before about it being silly, I I, I just think it's like a, some people, some teams will probably think it's going to be greener than it is, and a lot of them are going to bank on something happening that potentially they might get made to look really fucking stupid. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like yeah, what, they're going to be it, losers. Yeah, but no, but like Ipswich are like founder members of the Premier League, right? Yeah, yeah. Where are Ipswich now? No one knows. Not even and Biel's like well, they're underneath Bielsa Peterborough. Can't they even... are underneath Peterborough in League One. That's where they are. There, <laughs> that's where they are. there you go. Ian knows, of course he does. We but are top of the league, so we are top of the league. What, what would be interesting to see and how they report the stats and how the model comes in, because obviously, like you said before, when it went Premier League, it went from terrestrial and it went to a paid subscription. When you go from that, it is very easy and tangible to see the effect, the financial effect and the demand, uh, increase in demand and what you would want to see from the Premier League, right? So now, if we already have those paid models in, and say, for example, this year it was going to change to European Super League and it was on X channel, let's say it was split still between Sky and BT, but it was part of the package. Well, it's like, personally, I didn't get that package to pay for the European Super League games, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's just an offshoot and a a thing for me. Whereas they might say, oh, this is all the money that European Super League's bringing to subscriptions, when actually it could just be a misrepresentation of what people are actually getting those bundles and those kind of things for, and then how that money would then get split from the subscription fees. Right. I would assume this Premier, this Super League that would potentially come would have to be a surplus on top. It wouldn't... It, yeah. Judging by the fact they wouldn't pay the money. And so for me personally, like I wouldn't pay that extra... If it meant that I could drop my subscription and just keep to the Premier League, I'd be like, yeah, cool, happy days. Yeah, but it's not being marketed to like Crystal Palace fans from England. It's being marketed to like global no, no. fans no, no, of I know. soccer more than like even those specific teams, right? Like, Of course, but I'm so, talking about how the model would then work in this country. And gotcha, how, gotcha, gotcha, you know, sorry. You've, yeah, yeah, you've, yeah. You've, you've, you've already also seen in America now that there's a change in the structure because Ugh. more things, as the demand has gone up, you now have more services and you're starting to understand what it's like as a English fan mm-hmm. and the fact that you have to have not just one but multiple subscriptions and go between multiple things and the cost gradually goes boop, 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 as they as they monetize it all. Yeah. So it'd be just interesting to see how they bundle it, how they package it in and then those kind of things. I would assume it would have to be an amount of money on top because I don't see them dropping what they charge people, say, in this country. Um, and personally, like, I mean, I don't pay for Sky now. I pay for BT, but not Sky, because that's even a more premium. And if you're going to add the European Super League on top of that... But equally, if if the European Super League was to take, which might be the inevitable thing that happens in years and years to come, if the European Super League was to take teams away from the Premier League, like, and and then, you know, if, if, if it was to be a genuine, break, a genuine yeah. league breakaway... And not just then, six teams, the six most marketable teams, the teams that make the yeah. most money for the league. Then I can fully understand that from a global point of view and quality of uh, competition point of view of, oh, these would be the best teams in Europe playing each other week after week. But I wouldn't want either the European Super League because I'm, I'm not particularly knowledgeable about European football. And I wouldn't want the diluted Premier League that hasn't got Man United, you know, so I'd probably end up cancelling subscriptions. I don't know where I'd go because I'd still want to watch football, I suppose. But like my interest would be severely diluted because I I want to watch English teams play each other. I haven't got yeah. a particular interest in European football. Brexit, isn't it? And I it's don't know so, if... I, yeah, exactly. It's perfect that it's two Brits and an American here because like... If those six teams weren't in the Prem, I'd never watch a fucking Premier League game again. I don't give a fuck about West Brom. Like, I want to <laughs> yeah, see totally the most famous that, players yeah. playing the best soccer again. Like, that's why the World Cup is so popular, right? Because it's just like, everyone's there. You know what I mean? And so yeah. if you can have, like, all the riches... But, sorry, that's an entire separate side point. And I understand <laughs> that I'm a heathen for potentially enjoying such a blasphemous thing. Right. I want to go... Hold on. I want to go back, though, to the founding of the Premier League. Because that was, like, a pretty... I think it must have been seen as like almost a bluff or an impossible thing that happened, right? Like it was such a radical change. It was a bunch of teams were like, no, you know what? This is the top division. Fuck that. We're going to make something else instead. And you guys can get on board or not, right? Like, Yeah, because it was a total breakaway organization. It was it involved a, a TV company that until then existed to show the Simpsons and, and sort of <laughs> the, odd, the odd American show that came over. You know, it, it was absolutely huge and like I say yeah total new organization new chief executive it was a genuine breakaway while still remaining in that pyramid structure and that's the thing right, that might right, dis- right, right. you know or, or not disappear but yeah, like, do might you be make the european super derailed. league the top division 
<laughs> and like six teams get promoted. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, I, I mean, I obviously not for the first 20 years because like everyone's locked in for 20 years. That's the like, yeah, you know, that's yeah, part of the I mean, deal. I, I, but j- just because it's always been this way, I don't like that sort of static idea of sport where, you know, this sure. is, this is the league. And then that's, that's just because for us, that's how it's always been, you know. <laughs> And it makes sense in American sports, of course, because the foundation there is the setup is there. But you're changing something that obviously we go on about the English football pyramid, but it's the same in France, in Germany, in Spain, yeah. and whatever yeah, other yeah, countries yeah, yeah. do form this. It's just like they're all completely breaking away. And I think that the transition of players and teams and how that works is the most interesting because, like how prices are inflated now, let's say for transfers for Premier League teams. Mm-hmm. Well the same would then be true for Super League teams. Yeah, absolutely. So they would then have to pay even higher premiums to be able to get players because the appeal then for the European Super League is that they have to have the best players. Then for their then marketability and attraction, they can't allow other leagues to potentially fill up with superstars and then form a similar thing. Like there, there is potentially no reason why you couldn't end up with then a big four in the Premier League that all of a sudden gets more investment. And yeah, you see, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, see, you see what I mean? And you start to get... The, the gap doesn't form as much as that. So what happens then? Do Are they able to buy the clubs? Do other clubs just freeze them out? Because they're like, well, no, fuck you guys. You, you wanted to go off on your own. You right, crack right, on. Right, right. Do FIFA get involved and say that they're not going to Oh, um, FIFA are behind the European things? thing. They are like this. The European Premier League, Super League thing has the backing of FIFA. Because FIFA has beef with UEFA. So like they're trying to yeah. fuck the Champions League over. <laughs> like that's part of yeah. that there. But like, let, So the TV rights in America and in Asia are up for the Premier League in five years. Which would be the season after potentially a European Super League gets founded, right? So if in five years, the six big clubs, and I don't think they're going to break off. I think they'll still be in the prem, but let's say hypothetically that the six big clubs, the six six richest clubs leave. And now all these international companies are renegotiating the Premier League TV rights for a Premier League that now no longer has those six teams. Like the Premier League isn't going to be a rich league anymore. Those new deals are going to be infinitely less money like, it will because they, they still have owners worth hundreds of millions and it just changes tack people will still want to get into it and still want to own sport in the way that in the way that Ryan Reynolds and uh, Rob McElhenney <laughs> have bought Wrexham you know what I mean like there will no, always but be by that far there. the biggest source of income for clubs is the TV money like that's why the Premier League is the Premier League it's all the TV money not Chelsea, it's Roman Abramovich and oil. Well, like, that's it's, true. You know what I mean? Like, but I also think that big owner sort of philosophy thing only happens because they think they can get their team into the higher echelons of the biggest money making league in the world. Mm. Like, which the Premier League, under, under what Oscar's saying, the Premier League would not be anymore. So those owners would mm. gradually drop off. I don't think you'd get... Well, I don't know why Ryan Reynolds is buying Wrexham other than to get them into the Premier League. Surely that's the... <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that was definitely would... like a drunken, like, we should buy a team, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, almost, de- like... almost definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is almost definitely the motivation. But yeah, w- would that sort of big owner thing happen anymore where you get them buying, you know, League One teams or even as low as like Salford were and thinking they yeah. can they can get them up? Well, what? why if the biggest prize is topping the league against Wolves? That's very much the unspoken motivation for this too. Like say whatever else you want. The biggest clubs in the world don't want a new club to come in and be another one of the biggest clubs in the world, right? Like, yeah. you saw how, every, how angry all of the clubs were when Monaco tried to do it and then basically just, like, shunned them out of being a thing within a couple of years, right? Like, Mon- Monaco spent, like, crazy money on a bunch of players and then, like, five years later, they had nobody. Mm, yeah, but they also made a fuckload of money off of selling a lot of players and that's what's fucked them in a way. Kind of, <laughs> almost, in a way that Southampton had that they just kept selling mm, selling okay. players over and over okay. and over again. Someone 50, in Monaco 60 is making money by selling assets. Okay, so that's mm. a bad example. And, but they like... can, and, they can, and they can draw people in, obviously, with the fact that you don't pay tax on what you earn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny that. Yeah. Mm. All right, let's move on. That's 40 minutes of rapid fire news. (laughs) I do have a story about how the Premier League fans are raising a ton of money instead of doing the pay-per-view matches. Shout out. As of a week ago, it was 300,000 pounds. I couldn't find any numbers as to what the latest figure is up to. But if you are doing that, continue to do that. Don't watch Fulham versus West Brom for 15 pounds. Give that to a hungry kid somewhere. I have seen some. I don't know if it's unfounded or not, but I had seen something that it was rumored the average uptake for the pay-per-view games is about 80,000 people. Oh, but average. So think about it. Two people paid for Fulham West Brom. 
So automatically, <laughs> another game could have been 160,000. 160, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Shall we go through these fixtures? We've avoided it as long as we can, but I think we should. Yeah, let's smash through this shit. Yeah, let's smash through them. All right. We'll we have uh, Friday, October 30th, Hollows Eve. The eve before Halloween, we had Wolverhampton 2, Crystal Palace 0, Wolves 1.4, to Palaces 0.8. Chuck, how long do you actually want to spend talking about this Crystal Palace match? I will leave that entirely up to you, sir. All Hallows, all Hallows Eve is, is the is 31st. Halloween. Yeah. No, I said, did I say All Hallows Eve? I meant Halloween's Eve. Right, okay. The Fuck eve of Hall- the day before Halloween. <laughs> Whatever. Christmas Eve, Eve. Yeah. See, he's okay. So you don't want to talk about Palace at all. Clearly, <laughs> that's what this is. He will pick up on anything. Uh, <laughs> anything to stop this up. Another offside goal. Um, Patrick Van Aanholt doesn't defend. Um, don't you like Van Aanholt? I thought he was your boy. Yeah. Yeah, but he clearly forgotten how to defend. Oh, okay. So he's out. From the highlights I saw where everything was go down the right, cross, oh, Wolves nearly score. Go down the right, cross, oh, Wolves nearly score. Oh, this is getting a bit repetitive. And then on the fifth time, we're like, okay, Wolves have scored. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then, oh, they did it again and Wolves scored. Yeah. Mm. All right, so mm. I'm assuming I shouldn't bring up any like XG or XGA numbers for Palace as far as how well they've done so far this season or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to say that game, 0.3. No, 0. 0.8. Oh, 0. 0.8. 0. 0.8, according to Understat, may have been more from different models. There's been a lot of divergence this year. That's like two threes having a hug. That makes an eight, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. they're <laughs> hugging. All right, so like really, you, you like really just don't want to talk about Palace? That's fine. I don't have many things to say, but I just don't want to like step on your toes here. Who does? Okay. <laughs> Who does? Same, same old shit. <laughs> You've given him enough chance. Same old shit, but this time we had a bit more possession. And it was like, oh yeah, we've got a bit of possession. Oh, right, don't worry about attacking. Don't don't worry about just leaving Eze on there. Don't worry about changing the formation. Oh, Milivojevic is there. Oh, red card. Brilliant. <laughs> Which yeah, they're appealing. Good. They're appealing the red card, so you might have them back. You weren't the only team this week who had possession and was just sideways passing. And fuck me, there was a lot of that this week. Peterborough? No, not Peterborough, but what? Sheffield United? Sheffield United. Let's move on to Saturday, October 31st, Halloween morning or mid-afternoon if you're in the UK. Um, I believe that's what it was. Anyway, Sheffield United 0, Manchester City 1, Sheffield 0.7 to Manchester City's 1.9. So a really solid win for Man City just doing the business against a team that's not so good. That's not very in- inspiring as well, is it? I don't think you could be too happy with that if you're a Man City fan. What, a 1-0 against Sheffield? A 1-0 against what has probably been the worst team in the league this year, yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, the form... Well, well, I don't know about the worst team in the league, but the form <laughs> that they've been in, I think City were, would have just been happy to get a, like, solid win that was never particularly yeah. in doubt. You know what I mean? Like, 1-0, fine, but, like, 1.9 to 0.7 is, like, a, a comfortable victory, I would say. I mean, they're not scoring goals and they're performing their XG. And it, mm. That's not what you want from Man City, is it? That's no. not what you expect. <laughs> so Ferran Torres playing at striker in this one, right? We talked a lot about like Aguero's out, Jesus is out. Both of those guys still didn't play, but I thought they did look a little bit better with Torres in the middle there. He adds a little bit of height and a little bit more physicality that like Sterling doesn't seem to be, for obvious reasons, capable of. The obvious reasons being that he's a tiny little pocket man. <laughs> his actual size. Pocket yeah. man! <laughs> running down the pitch and failing his arms! <laughs> Very good. Oh. Man. <laughs> Lovely. Buying his mom a house and getting shit for it. <laughs> All right, let me let me throw some numbers at you guys then about the season we've had so far, and then I'll ask a direct question, and then we can move on potentially. Manchester City currently tenth on expected points. Ew. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, sixth on XGA. So the sixth best defense so far on underlying numbers, at least, and. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth on XG. So, like, solidly mid table according to all of the numbers. Do we still think that City have a shot at the title? Slash, are potentially, we were all pretty adamant that they're the best team in England as of the beginning of the season in our preview pod. How are you guys feeling on that take? Mm, I don't feel comfortable on any takes about this season. <laughs> Fair. None. Been all the takes. Been them all. Been them all. I have one take that I've had from the first day that I'm comfortable with, and we'll get to it in a minute, but definitely I, I'm also revising my opinion of Manchester City. Yeah, it's not inspiring. But no one is, no one is inspiring. No one is, like, looking any good or... What, you weren't inspired by Newcastle's 2-1 over 
Best team in the world, Everton. No comment? Okay, fine. <laughs> um, Manchester City. Are they cooked? Is it age that caught up to them? Does Pep not have the sauce? Is it just a weird, like, what's going on in the background, but they'll they'll catch up to their numbers? Like, someone take a stance here. <laughs> I will not move on <laughs> until someone does. Yeah, I think that we have got to a point where uh, Foden maybe hasn't played enough to have the experience to take over from David Silva. Okay. We've talked about it before where they've lost... They've lost big characters like Company Silver. They've lost all of those recently. Um, Aguero's getting on now, possibly body breaking down. Who knows? Jesus has never been quite lethal enough to be the second striker. He's mm-hmm. out as well now. They don't seem to have a third one. It it does seem like a perfect storm at the minute that is going to be hard to recover from if it carries on for much longer. It, it, it's hard because their players are such good quality individually. They've spent so much money on their defence that that needs to click. But if it does, they'll be all right. But it's just like, well, when is it going to happen? It's sort of it's getting a bit silly now. Yeah, when 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 do Man City reach their potential? When does it happen? <laughs> well, yes, I accept how ridiculous that is. But I mean, it's this is the sort of the second phase, isn't it, of of uh, when a big club, maybe not the second phase because they got bought out such a long time ago, but mm. it was, you know, that, that team was built, dominated as much as they did for a little while, and now it's got to be refreshed. Has Pep ever done a rebuilding job like this? No. No, never. No. Never, no. never, he's never. Always, he's always left before now. This is the longest exactly. he's been at the club. And he so. might just leave. Like, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he just fucks off before this season is over. And he's just like, you know what? I'm going to move to New York and take a year. Oh, wait. Maybe not the best time to move to America. Take a year off <laughs> He somewhere. probably would. He probably would. He's that fucking insane. Yeah, maybe. I, put, I, I think it will just be like, there won't be any announcement or anything. Just one day he won't. he just won't be there. <laughs> he just won't turn up. <laughs> Like he just won't, he just won't be there or anything. Like he'll just, he'll just get out of his door one day, and rather than turning left, he'll just turn right. He's already getting questions about going back to Barcelona. Yeah, and he'll go meet Andy and Red on Zihuatanejo. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Week two of obscure movie references that no one gets. Uh, next match on Saturday, we had Burnley zero, oh, Chelsea God, yay go. three. I'm going to, Burnley I'm going to zero the point. Hmm? I'm going to the toilet. I'll be back in a bit. All right, you have about 15 minutes, don't worry. Uh, Burnley 0, Chelsea 3. Burnley 0.4 to Chelsea's 1.2 on XG. Gentlemen, I just have one very, very simple thing to say about this, and then I'll let you guys kind of throw some things out there. Last week on this podcast, I said that before the next international break, I wanted to see one thing to be happy, and that was a comprehensive performance with on both in defense and attack not in a particularly defensively set up team like the like the two <laughs> clean sheets the week before the the zero zeros with three at the back situation. This was a fucking mid three of Conte, Mount, and Havertz <laughs> with Ziyech, Verder, and Tammy ahead of them. Like one of those guys is actually a central mid, played with two extremely aggressive attacking tens, and like wingers and a strike like. It was the most aggressive lineup you could see, and they looked good on both sides of the pitch. Yes, it's only Burnley. Yes, they they did it against Krasnodar. Same thing, like almost no chances conceded. They looked good. Mendy's on four clean sheets now. So I'm happy. They did what I wanted them to do before the break. I don't think you can ask for anything more, really. I've seen that, as you say, seeing that lineup when I saw who had been uh you know dropped from the previous game and brought into the lineup it was like geez this is this is all out he's looking to make a statement mm-hmm. against Burnley without a doubt and i mean that's the team to do it against isn't it if you if you're playing burnley you need a result to um who Ch- chelsea played uh, manu last week didn't they and and were yeah zero zero uninspiring broke the, the game was uninspiring i don't sorry they broke the league they broke the they league broke the i league. mean yeah yeah, exactly. But the game was uninspiring. Not Chelsea particularly. It was just, it was just not good. And to then, uh, yeah, come back with intent against Burnley um, was fun to watch. Fucking it was, Burnley. It, 
Yeah, I know it's only Burnley, it's but you can Burnley. only play what's... Yeah, it's you only said Burnley, last but week, you can only Burnley, play... <laughs> Sheffield United, Newcastle, like, a team like Chelsea, the way they've set up, like you said, Oscar, exactly. This is just what should happen. We shouldn't... We should not have to talk this much. <laughs> like, obviously, Oscar being a Chelsea fan aside, fine. We automatically assume that there is at least an 82% increase in the amount of airtime to Chelsea. <laughs> That's Just fine. But we should not be giving this match any more credence than like a gloss over. Like, this is exactly football as football is expected to be. Do you think Frank's been given too much credit in the media for this? <laughs> yeah, probably. Because they have yeah. been, there has been a sort of flip flop of fawning, I think. Uh, with Frank Lampard, depending on individual games, it's like, oh, Frank doesn't know what to do. And then they beat Burnley and it's like, oh, he, he always knew what he was doing. Don't mm-hmm. worry. <laughs> it does sort of feel like that a little bit. He's still learning himself. Like I get it. And that, like you have to acknowledge there are weaknesses in the game, in his, in his tactics, which maybe deliberately like Oli was trying to address last week when they got the nil-nil. And then obviously against Krasnodar, um, getting getting a clean sheet. And then, you know, just going into this game with Burnley and knowing what you had to do and doing it. That is acceptable. That is a, that is pleasing to me to see. And yes, this should be the scoreline when you spend £8 billion on a squad. That is much more generally the story for Saturday as well. Man City just did the business against Sheffield. We did the business against Burnley. And Liverpool did the business against West Ham. Like, all teams mm. didn't concede more than one XG solid, easy victories. Like, we'll get to Liverpool in a second, but... So, yeah, I mean, this was very much a return to normalcy from the Premier League this weekend. But, like, that in and of itself is worthy of commentary from the neutral perspective, just of how crazy everything else has been. Like, this was really Chelsea's first, like, comprehensive performance in the league. Yeah, yeah. They didn't beat Palace 4-0 or anything. But, like, Palace didn't try to attack. And, like, this was was a complete performance. I'm not trying to downplay Palace. I'm not trying to downplay the 4-0. This was to me with my eye, right, instead of the XG. The first time that I saw a team that was like top to bottom doing what they were supposed to do. Chilwell is great. Silva is great. Mendy is great. The defense looks like it's actually keeping the clean sheets. Here's some. Okay, here's a number for you. Um, Chelsea are conceding about 0.4 XGA per 90. Not even half a goal per 90 in XG. The defense has been spectacular so far this season. The... Hold on. Yeah, but well, what was it with Kepa? Because that would be the same. He, he was just over expectedly shit. Yeah, no, with no, no, no. Conceded goals allowed. <laughs> it's been 0.4 for the entire season. Five games with Kepa, zero clean sheets. Five games without Kepa, four clean sheets. Like, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 I mean, that is the difference. But, like, um, real quick sort of. Please. Footnote before we move on Hakim Ziyech makes his debut in the Champions League, scores, makes his debut in the Premier League, scores two goals in two games this week, first full starts. He is the one to me that seems like he's most ready to be out of the box, given his age profile. He is in his peak, uh, the collective box that has all the toys, the shiny new toys that Chelsea bought this summer. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that the toy one. box. He's, he is peak age, so he's ready to go. Werner's still youngish, approaching the peak, and the other guys that we bought are all like super young. Havertz is 20 or 21, Chile's 23, like these guys are pretty young. But Ziyech coming straight out of the box and getting results and like creating and doing what he's supposed to do is great. It really just feels like things are finally falling into place. Delightful. Without Pulisic as well. And the double pivot guys on their Patreon episode last week spent a solid... He's not mentioning that. He's not mentioning uh, that. I'll get to that in a second. Yeah, very sad. Um, Scans haven't shown anything, but Pulisic did pull out in the warm-up, which was upsetting. But double pivot guys, Kaylee and Goodman, on their Patreon episode last week, spent about 30 minutes talking about why Chelsea could actually win the title this year mm. and it's not unreasonable to say we said it before we and said it before. boy was I masturbating furiously <laughs> that entire time <laughs> oh so and here I was thinking that you painted your walls that's no, just well, <laughs> gross <laughs> gross <laughs> too much <laughs> 30 minutes for Oscar though 40 minutes for me 30 minutes for Oscar you 20 Chuck <laughs> but how many times is that <laughs> oh, speaking of masturbating like a plasterous radio <gasps> For these blisters, you could ski round then. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. Oh man. Um, speaking of masturbating furiously for blue teams, Ian, do you want to take five minutes here to talk about the Chelsea of League One? The Ch- top <laughs> of the league, of league baby. One. Top of the league, yeah. Results went for us. Um, Lincoln lost, Hull lost. The big names, Chuck, the big names. Um, 
<laughs> so, yeah, we're top on, I think, goal difference now. We're uh, unbeaten unbeaten in October. Only We've dropped two points in the been league. Here before. We've seen it all <laughs> we have many not been times. top of League One, this no. This is how it begins. <laughs> <laughs> and it all comes crashing no, down. No, we're keeping clean sheets. We are keeping clean sheets. We never keep clean sheets. It's happening. You so, really are yeah. the Chelsea of League One. <laughs> we are, and it's and both things have changed. You, you're keeping clean sheets. We're keeping clean sheets. It's it's like looking in a mirror. You guys are the second most likely to make the playoffs according to Five Thirty Eight. The third most likely to get promoted, and the third most likely to win League One. Third so. most likely to get promoted. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, fine, whatever. I won't tell you the actual percentage because it's it's pretty even down there. Let's say. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it is. There's a lot of games to go, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we started the month scrape like getting wins, but not deserving them, and we ended the month doing really well. So you know, it's falling into place. It's falling into place. There you go. Good stuff. All right. Uh, last match of Halloween, we had Liverpool two, West Ham one. 1.6 to 0.3, so a very comprehensive victory there on XG for Liverpool. Liverpool doing the business without Virgil van Dijk, this new kid. Um, I'm, I already forgot his name. Phillips. Phillips, yes. Uh, this new kid, Phillips, comes in, looks pretty good at the back. 4.0 in FPL, so if he's a playing defender in li- for Liverpool for two 4 points million. Is two points. Two points is two points, mate. Yes, two points. Oh, God, for fuck's sake, it's one game. Come on. Wan Bissaka, he's this year's Wan Biz. 4.0 is <laughs> not bad. Yeah. It's just one to, one to think about. Finished thinking about it. We should say, West Ham have been good, man. Like, only 0.3 for one of the better attacking teams in the league so far this year. Like, that's that's a solid defensive performance from Liverpool there. I mean, they would have needed that with Van Dijk out. You, you know, imagine if... Van Dyke goes out and within a couple of games they collapse to like a 3 0 loss against West Ham. That would have been Oh, I really wanted it. And especially you when, really wanted that to happen. when West Ham scored first. I was like, Oh yes. Yeah. It's yeah, meant true. to be. And then oh no. But you know, if that if that had have happened, um I mean it would have been fun from a neutral point of view, because that would have busted the league wide open, wouldn't it? But Yeah. Yeah. I think um he, it was a good it was a good defensive performance, but if Phillips is going to get a run in the team, then yeah, he's going to have to make sure he's fucking consistent. Because uh, Gomez, I do not like as a centre back. You know, no, I do not, not like good. at that level of, of of competition. I just don't think he's good enough. And uh, to be paired with someone who's not got a lot lot of experience, Liverpool could be in a little bit of trouble. I bet they're very glad to have Allison back in goal. Yeah, and mm. losing Fabinho, who was the first deputy to Van Dijk and who looked really good for a bit there. And the other side yeah, of that. Yeah. Yeah. Is Liverpool's fucking analytics team and a mathematician going to win the league for them with this kid, Phillips, that like, no, is it Phillips? I keep forgetting already. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Phillips. I'm, her- I'm horrible <laughs> with names. With this kid, Phillips, is he secretly like amazing because they just like have really smart people to find really good kids? Like, Nah, it's because the constipator came back. <laughs> That's what it is. Constipate, it is. Constipate is back from injury. Steadies the ship. Steadies the shit. Steadies the shit. <laughs> That's exactly what it does. Tightens the colon. And away we go. <laughs> it really tightens things up at the back. Um, Sunday, November first, two thousand twenty, gentlemen. We are in November. Ugh. Um, <laughs> Aston Villa three, Southampton four. The Hooray! quote unquote match of the weekend. A with- glimpse of what we could have had. Well, what we could have had before Chelsea and United fucked it. Yes, and indeed, <laughs> cue the jingle, because this is the... Ooh, they're better than they ought to be. Burnley of the week. Burnley of the week, that's right. Southampton 4, Villa 3. Southampton only generated 1.0 on XG, and Villa did 2.5. So... I think this might be Burnley of the season? <laughs> I don't know. So people... So, okay... This is actually absolutely a perfect place to bring up the game state effects. Caveat that should go with XG that I admittedly don't use often enough because, like, there's 10 matches a weekend, so I don't fully remember the details of all of them, etc. But, like, Southampton scored really early here, took a huge lead. Mm. On, on extremely, it should be noted, they looked good, but they were extremely unlikely goals. A set-piece goal and two beautiful free kicks that if they weren't so hard to do 
we wouldn't be like, oh my God, what a ridiculous free kick, right? So like by definition that we're praising it means it was a low XG chance. Yeah. People overestimate how often those direct free kicks are scored. They, oh, they are not scored that often. Like every time a team gets a free kick in that position, you're like, oh, goal chance. But really, how often does it just fucking smash into the wall, go wide? You know, it, it's it's way more likely that it just turns into nothing than a goal. And Ward Prowse just scored a couple of, you know, absolute peaches, basically. Perfectly placed. And like he should get credit. But I think that's really different from saying that Southampton were like much the better team here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because they scored from unlikely things. But I think similarly, the low XG that they have doesn't tell the full story because they just shut off. They were like, okay, we're not doing jack shit, but try to defend this lead. And then Villa just had the rest of the match to just attack, 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 attack. And of course, they generated 2.5 and scored three goals. So like, that's not that surprising either. Um, Huge fantasy returns in this one. Did you guys do well? No, I have none of these players. (laughs) No, I had um, Watkins, so I got the penalty. But no, I I have Southampton defence, not attack. So, oh, so that was looking really good for you for a while. Did no- <laughs> Yeah, it was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fucking hell. Did no do well? Did you have Vestergaard? Was that the Southampton defence? No, you had? Finley does. I've got um, oh, Walker Peters off. and fucking McCarthy. This kid, fucking. I know it. Finley's had a good week. Yeah. Must be, uh, is he a Patreon stats robot level subscriber? He's been looking at the spreadsheets. That's why he has Vestergaard. <laughs> does feel like he's got Vestergaard in a couple of your players. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, he's going to finish above me this week. <laughs> Bulls. Oh, really so. yeah. I've only got Oscar's bullshit team below me. Um, <laughs> watch out for substitutions and if Vardy gets some points, because it's not my team for the record, but the stats robots <laughs> might well catch up to you this week. Oscar. It's going to be tight. Fuck off. It's been a good week for the wild card. We'll get to it. Well, moving on, we had, uh, we briefly mentioned this earlier, Newcastle United 2, Everton 1. Again, not out of line with XG here. Pretty much the story for all weekend other than that 3-4 weird one. Uh, this was 2.6 to 1.2. So potentially a 3-1 scoreline would have been more accurate, but it's like very, <laughs> very, very close. Um, Everton minus James are not good. <laughs> no James, no Richarlison, no Lucadinia. That's it. They just got five constipators. That's all they've got. That's why. They've got no one that links it. No one's making runs in behind. Calvert Lewin doing his best. Bless him. Getting still getting a goal. Good egg. A draw in two losses after what four wins on the bounce and they were top. They need uh, to get sponsored by Chipotle if they're feeling constipated for goals. <laughs> oh. oh Jesus Christ! That free you right up on it. You'd be you'd be doing a linicker all over the pitch. <laughs> just spraying it all <laughs> over the pitch. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> um, so Everton out, Everton, are Everton going to still be in the shout for top four? We were potentially mostly you guys talking about like they might make a title run a couple of weeks ago. They could still do like if, you know, it's it's like we said last week, it's just about managing injuries and every team will have the same similar kind of effect. There's about 12 teams in with a shout of probably a top four place at the minute. Um, it's mad, mad. So... It's still so, it, like, you'd think things would start to shake up a bit more yeah. already. Um, it seems to be just kind of forming like it did last year, like Liverpool and Leicester are doing things and uh, and staying top and everyone else is just going to try and chase. We had a we had a listener question here that's relevant from uh, uh, Oscar Dalton, uh, oh. son, of, son of Papa Dalton. Son of Papa. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it was pretty simple, but it does go into this top four thing. It just says rank uh, these three teams: Arsenal, Everton, and Wolves. So, so out of those three, who do you think out is most what? likely? What am I ranking them? Shittest Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> well, the traditional way. <laughs> so yeah, go well, fine. Go in ascending order. I said it well. Uh, personal preference, yeah. Arsenal is Arsenal shit. Hit me with the three teams again: Arsenal, Everton, and Wolves. None of them will make top four. Everton are the best if they can stay healthy. Wolves are most likely. Wolves are most likely to make top four, you think? Yes, because I think they have the most consistent spread across the squad and the most uh, tactical like practice as knowing what they have to do. Everton, we've just seen they're only like two, three injuries away from collapsing and mm. Arsenal are in a, still in a bit of a reset. So I think out of those three, most likely would probably be Wolves. Interesting. I have them most likely to finish the lowest. Arsenal, I think, if they can either convince Arteta to stop playing Lacazette 
or get a, a good manager, like a manager that knows what to do with a soccer team to win. Yeah, I don't know. Like I just said Arsenal shit, but I mean, did Man United get a penalty? No. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Doing this was right. a fucking boring match, but I should say the scoreline, Manchester United 0, Arsenal 1, 0.4 to 1.0 on XG, but that's obviously not open play. Um, this was really bad. I can't bring myself to talk about it. I watched the first half and then went, no, I'm done. It's it's such a, the, the, you know, I don't know what the coverage is like uh, in America, Oscar, but... Sky build this up to, I think I've said before about when I was at uni, which was about 2003 and like that Man United Arsenal was a must watch game. You'd get in the pub and watch it because it would always kick off. Fuck me. How many montages of Vieira and Keane do we have to watch and hear them go through? It's fucking years ago. It's it's not the fixture it was. Move on, and guys. That Live in there now. Is... Say again? Move on, guys. Live in there now. Just yeah, totally. It was it was painful to watch them do those montages again, and I just can't be bothered with it. This fixture was fucking dull. I didn't watch the second half because I couldn't be asked. It's awful. I was literally falling asleep on and off the entire time, and not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> just dozing. I was like, I gotta watch this match for the podcast. <clears throat> I gotta watch this match for the podcast. Nope, back to sleep. It was so fucking boring. And like, I've been a Chelsea fan for over half my life. And even I barely caught the tail end of Manchester United being like a marquee fixture. Like, I feel like once Henri left, like Arsenal were just were no longer like the Arsenal. We should give them some credit here. By the way, this is their first win against a top six team in like 10 years or something. (laughs) (laughs) I will say, first of all, I feel sorry for Dr. Sir Marcus Rashford, MBE. I know I said Arsenal shit again, but... Is this exactly what you kind of need to see Arsenal be able to do? Like, yeah. they can just do boring and humdrum and stink up games and then get... Because we've said, like, that's what Arsenal needs structure. And before Arteta went in, like, we joked that you need someone like an Allardyce to go in to clear it out, <laughs> start again, bore it down. And, like, is that kind of what he's doing? And does that mean it's actually quite a good thing? Yeah, I think you're right. I think defensively, they were decent. They broke up Man United's play really well, very easily. And I think, yeah, I, it might have been a dull game, but certainly defensively, Arsenal did a, a very good job. They didn't. I don't think they created very much. But um, yeah, from that point of view, boring Arsenal, boring, boring Arsenal worked think, well, you know. Because the timing matches up with all three of Arteta, Solskjaer and Lampard. Who you can you can fit all three of those in a similar mould in terms of yeah, absolutely. experience at, at that level. And it is quite funny that all of a sudden it seems that all of them are now no longer just going for attacking or whatever, but just trying to contain things. And I'm wondering if the chaos, the early season chaos where everyone was scoring against everyone, like teams have gone now like, right, we need to fucking stop this. This is not sustainable. We need to tighten things up. And now whether it means potentially there would be more clean sheets or at least more teams playing for clean sheets to try and dull things down and take control more. It also happens naturally over the course of a season anyway. Every season it, it, it gets silly to start with and then teams tighten up as they go. It, I don't think, I think a lot's been made out of the fact that obviously there's no fans and blah, blah. And I think there are results that wouldn't have happened had there been mm-hmm. fans in, in, in the sands. But... I think too much has been made out of it. I think a lot of seasons start like this with a lot of goals and then it starts to tighten up and we are maybe just seeing what happens every season. Okay, counterpoint. No. Oh, here, he goes. here he goes, Red Devils advocate <laughs> over here. Of those three teams, very clearly Chelsea are not going to have a problem creating goals, right? Like why that you, attack that they have. Why bring this back to Chelsea? Time, just give me a second to finish my sentence <laughs> and then you'll be fine. Every the week. other two teams in that that you described, specifically Arsenal and Man United, have been mightily struggling struggling to generate chances. And both of those teams do not need to focus on defending. They need to focus on creating shots. They're just not getting shots. Manchester United are 1918 17th for shot creation and XG. Arsenal are 14th for shot creation and XG. They're both below Crystal Palace. And you yourself have talked about how not attacking Crystal go. Palace have been. Right? Like I'm not I'm not saying that to talk shit about Crystal Palace. I'm saying that because you have talked about how Crystal Palace have been so negative. 
not yeah, creating chances, etc. Like also, Man United in recent years, relative to before, are in a lot worse state than a club like Chelsea, and relatively, they're in a lot worse state than a team like Palace. So that makes sense that things have to break a bit more and get a bit worse before they can come back. You know what I mean? Like they aren't going to create as much because yeah. it's a fucking mess. But I also think that there are structural changes that could be happening to create more chances. Specifically with Arsenal, like I said, drop Lacazette. And Man United's di- the diamond thing, they've lost... Man United, compared to lockdown, it's the same squad. They still have Greenwood, they still have Rashford, they still have Martial, they still have Pogba, they still have Bruno Fernandes, but they just lost all of their shots. And it has been a tactical change. Like, they're running a new system, a new formation, and they can't seem to get anything out of those guys anymore. And it's like, both of those managers need to reassess how they're structurally setting up their team to create shots... Because I'm, I am extremely skeptical that either of them is capable of doing that anymore. That these squads are like gonna be able to turn this around. Those are not just bad numbers. Those are, again, no offense, Chuck, below Crystal Palace in terms of creativity and shots. Like, that's not even close to okay. Fuck a zero zero. Fuck like, do we have a stable base? Like, show me you can create some shots. And the thing is, we're performing directly to our expected as well. <sighs> <laughs> so vanilla, Chuck. It's so vanilla. Vanilla ice, baby. Ice, ice, baby. All right. I've put off talking about this long enough. Stop. I will say now. Stop. Begrudgingly, I will Stop. admit. Yeah? Collaborate and listen. <laughs> you, God damn it. You had me for a second. <laughs> oh. I was like, no, no, no. What do you have something to say? You have something to say? No. Mm-mm. Okay. Oh, Flow to like heartbeat, daily and nightly. Jeff, prepare your tissues and your lube. Tottenham, I have to uh, begrudgingly admit, are a team that I'm now paying attention to and focusing on as potentially being someone that could make a title run, like Chelsea, Liverpool, and City. Tottenham are fucking for reals, and they had 2-1 against Brickton, Tottenham 2.0 to Britain's 0.3. Brighton, I mean it. Brighton pretty good this year. <laughs> We've talked about that. Are they? Yeah. Yeah? Well, let me see the numbers. Do I do I believe that claim or not? Six. 16th, mm, yeah, good, yeah, below Man United, yep. Yeah. That, that is the prevailing narrative that Brighton have been unlucky in every one of their matches, but I mean... It's At what getting... point does unlucky become shit? Well, exactly. Not six yeah, matches, exactly. I'll tell you that. Mm. Sample size. <laughs> six matches is not shit, it's unlucky potentially. It depends. Yeah. I mean, like, Arsenal are shit, right. but like... Well, first of all, seven matches, instantly just added one. <laughs> Just gained another, just gained another just set, 16.6%. So, <laughs> you, know. you know what I mean? Hey, more I'm data. trying to say something nice about Spurs more for data, once. Can more you data, more problems. <laughs> Famously. Oh, God. So, well, I mean, we don't have to talk about Tottenham. I don't want to talk about Tottenham. Gareth Bale done a goal. Gareth Bale done a goal. I do not want this. Harry Kane. Did Harry Kane do something naughty in this game? He did a bit naughty, yeah. I heard there was a naughty. I haven't seen he did it. A bit can, of a I, naughty. can I Google it while you talk about it? Yeah, go for it. Um, so basically, yeah, Harry Kane at the edge of the edge of the box. He the ball's coming out, and he I spies uh, Lana. Le, le, he I spies Adam Lanana. Lanana. Banana. Adam Alan Banana. Banana. Um, coming Alan. in, <laughs> and uh, he knows he Harry Kane knows exactly what he's going to do from the second he sees uh, Lalana coming in from a few yards. In that he sort of backs into him. And causes Lalana to sort of fall on slightly on top of him, although it's Kane fouling Lalana and Kane gets the penalty. And it's Oh, it was a display of the dark arts. He, oh, it's absolutely he knows exactly what he's doing. He absolutely buys that penalty. And but the problem is that So he cheated. Like, yeah, yeah, he cheated. He cheated. Um and Lalana could have got hurt, and it, it, it's going to happen well, one of these. And Lalana could get hurt getting well, out of bed. Yeah, like he's made of smoke, but the man's got it, legs made of Weetabix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he absolutely has. But um, someone could definitely get hurt with that sort of thing. Um, and it, it is a bit weird that Var didn't even want to look at that. So, or did look at it and didn't didn't think there was anything wrong with it. So. Yeah, Kane gets a penalty. You shouldn't got Brighton that got a goal. That is fucking relation. ridiculous. Sorry, I just found it. What? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not good, is it? Um, so Kane gets a penalty. You shouldn't have got Brighton got a goal. They shouldn't have got. So it probably all balances out. Can in we the talk end, about but... that? Because everyone's all mad online, and I'm like, fuck off. Uh, I mean, it was a foul. It was a foul. It was a foul. Sure, I'm not even remotely trying to deny that. But I've seen like worse things like that given. I've not, but. 
you know, it's not a VAR debate. It's not a thing. Like, there are still humans using it. And if, like, a human doesn't know what they're fucking doing, then they're not going to be able to correct the mistake if they don't know what the mistake is they made. Yeah, it was It was still the referee going over and looking at the monitor for a very long time, desperate to keep his decision going. Mm. Um, I, I am I the only used... one who thinks it was the right decision not to rule that goal out? For the record... It's a foul. That's not my argument at all. It's very clearly a foul. I just think it it happened too far back before the. Oh, goal. see, I don't. I don't agree with that because it's still. It's definitely still in the attacking phase of play. Like it. It was relatively quick. That the it was. It might have been a few passes, but Tottenham didn't get near the ball. It was. They were quick passes. It wasn't like it was forty seconds later that Brighton scored. Sure, that's I, true. I, I. I get that that could be an argument, although that is not what um, the referee was looking at. He was just looking at the tackle again and again and again. <laughs> and I think he used, the, he used the fact that the Brighton player, I think it was March, wasn't it, uh, touched the ball to justify his original yeah, which, decision. Which that is wrong. It, That's yeah, like crazy. Which, which is wrong. It, touching the ball does matter, but it, it, it's then the fact that he takes the player afterwards that's the problem. But yeah. he wasn't looking at, the phase of play which would be a genuine argument against it if you want to make that argument but yeah it was it's pretty poor i mean so there, there are two goals there that i just don't don't think should have happened and um yeah people are annoyed at var for killing goals but i mean it's, it so didn't it seem to matter so it was one nil one nil tottenham then it was so one nil tottenham. tottenham well done tottenham and yeah i think uh they're they're not Playing particularly well, as in when you watch Tottenham, I don't think of, you know, you don't feel the way you do when you were watching Man City a couple of years ago or Liverpool last year, even though they weren't, they were overperforming their numbers. They were yeah. exciting to watch. Tottenham are not exciting to watch. They're quite dull and I don't think they've been playing well, but they've still been getting results. And that could be a really good sign because when it does start clicking with players other than Kane and Son, then I think. They could be laughing. Mm. I I don't. <laughs> I'm not getting much from you two there. Mm. No, <laughs> I I'm, don't. I'm formulating a sentence. <laughs> I think that they are doing exactly what they mean to do, and I think that it is exactly very much a winning strategy that has long term viability. Um, mm-hmm. Even if they are boring, like they're not dominating let's say you're right the way city would but they are creating enough very high value chances that over the course of a season that's going to lead to a lot more wins and a lot more points than other teams that are potentially taking a more you know i talked about chelsea being comprehensive or whatever like like whatever the system is if you're making the chances they're second on expected points second on xg and i think Hmm. i don't have the numbers in front of you i think they're first for shots taken i'll pull that up while while you guys kind of react well that wouldn't surprise me with that with kane and Sutton. that wouldn't surprise me um so this is just what we should have expected from a jose tottenham second season jose man so they're gonna win something they're gonna win the fa cup if i had to put money now i would say the fa cup i don't think they're good enough to win the league but who knows this year yeah so i just got the numbers they're not actually first for shots they're like fifth for shots but they're first for shots on target which is again a good indicator that the That's shots the that they're the creating, that right? The shots they're creating are not <laughs> thirty yards out, hopeful off target, going out of bounds bullshit shots. It's like you, you know what they say: you score a hundred percent of the shots that you take on target, that no one stops. That's, That's true, saying, right? That's, that is true. Yeah. I have heard that before. That is the yeah. phrase. And once I've worked out what you said, I'll agree aggressively with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm upgrading Tottenham to. Insofar as I think that Chelsea are in a title run because of the weird year that it is, I'm putting Tottenham in that same category as a cheeky title run in a weird year. There are now four teams that I'm looking at or four teams whose results I care about. Chelsea, Liverpool, and City I've been saying all season. I have upgraded Tottenham to that group because of their performances, because of their shots, because of specifically Kane. Fuck me. His underlying numbers are back to like not just up. They're back to his peak. God, I hope this does not persist. Um... How much, if anything, are you guys upgrading Tottenham so far? Or are you still like where Tottenham are at? Like probably fifth, sixth? No, I think you could, yeah, I think you could definitely put them up in, in that bracket in that they are, no offense, but to, to put Tottenham, Man City, Liverpool and Chelsea in a group isn't necessarily the hottest of hot takes. Like it's. Well, when that group is title chances, like that's the hotness of the take. They're no, performing no. well, but there's just, there's, there's still no one that's grabbing this league 
by the balls and just going like, nah, I'm going to set the tone. We'll see, we'll see from here because now we do actually have, you know, we've got Liverpool in first and Tottenham in third. So we've got, based on, sorry, that is if Leicester win. Uh, Leicester would go to second in the league, and they are winning Currently at the moment. Currently, two as we one record. with twenty minutes left. Yeah, yeah. So I've, this is the problem. I've got two tabs open in a minute, and one's the live table, <laughs> and one's the actual table. Right. <laughs> so in one, Leicester are eighth, and in the other one, they're second. So, but you're, you're starting to see now teams that should quote um, be towards the top actually forming at the top now. So it's from that position whether you see them still play defensively. Or they fucking run with it and they try to break away and, and set a tone. It's interesting. It's, it's more fun this way. Not knowing. <sighs> I do not want Tottenham to be good. No. And that, this hasn't even included Bale either. Fuck it. I don't want to talk about this. Let's move on. That's enough about the fixtures. <laughs> well, well, the good news is that's fixtures done. Because we mentioned like Leicester Leeds a couple of times. And we're not talking about Fulham West Brom. Exactly. Fulham done a win. Way Well done. <laughs> oh, I should mention for, for the golds. Um, it's still... Not going to do well in the predictor league, but uh, yeah, <laughs> Mitrovic gets two assists. That's what you buy him for after seven <laughs> weeks <laughs> and all those shots. Yeah, <sighs> num num num. All right, well, it is my turn to hand off now that we are done with fixtures. I will kick back and start trolling the shit out of whoever takes the next segment. So go ahead, gentlemen, and take it away. <laughs> I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about FPL. That's it. Podcast is done. Mate. <laughs> why, why are you not talking about FPL? Why? why? Because we're. Ian, we're both doing so shit again. Like, why yeah, do you yeah. want to talk about it? I'm, I'm doing. The only reason I'm... you want to talk about it is because you're currently one point ahead. One of One point ahead of you into that again. Yeah, this week's matchup. Yeah. Like, why are we? Why are we even bothering? So, uh, where are we at on the season table? Is Chuck like super far behind, and that's why he doesn't want to talk about FPL anymore? No, nope. no, no. I nine, mean, nine I mean, points each. Nine points each. Yeah. If it, on the head to head, we are equal. I mean, it looks like I'm going to win this week, but so I'll be three points ahead. But yeah, the head to head has been tit for tat all the way, and I'm what about 40, 40 or fifty points or so ahead overall. So it's definitely sort of all to play for still. Um, interesting what you said earlier, Chuck. You are currently. Uh, only being kept off the bottom by Finley, who is four points behind you. And uh, the Stats Robots have leapfrogged you this week because uh, Oscar's Stats Robots team have got 68 on the on their wild card this week. Good wild card. The, as the uh, sample size grows, the Stats Robots will hopefully... Well, yeah, it does seem do like the data better. is uh, in your favour, yeah. Yeah, and some weird picks in here that I think most people, a lot of people would be like, what the fuck? Like Lundstrom. Lundstrom is gone. We wild carded. He's out. He's out. <laughs> wild carded out. But yeah, good week. Good week for the wild card. Um, I'll throw one cheeky sort of pick out there for you guys. And I got a lot of shit for this on the Patreon Slack, but I will 100% stand by the model on this one. Jorginho uh, at like whatever his value is, whatever his price is on the number one penalty taker at Chelsea. He won't play every match, but no one plays every match. Like this is just a season for rotation just because of the crazy schedules. Right. I do think Jorginho is going to play most matches. Four minutes he got this week. Four minutes. Four whole minutes. <laughs> yes, this week. <laughs> uh, so frustrating. Oh, come on. So frustrating. On. He's 5.3. He's on pens. He's probably one of the best value mids in the game. I, I When Chelsea first got him, I, I had him for a while and it was I was very happy with him. He, he is good value, definitely. Um, have you got any immediate thoughts about what you're going to do this week with the stats robots, Oscar? Are you going to, uh, got to get probably just of... roll the transfer, given that it's a wild card. I'll put it up to the peoples, but there's no injury problems that I can see. I think I'm going to go say to Bellerin. I'm probably going to do that tonight because Bellerin's looking to price rise. So yeah, that's um, that's what I'm thinking of doing. Why Bellerin? Why not? I think uh, he's had a couple of assists already. Uh, Arsenal look a bit more solid defensively. I. I don't know what their fixtures like, actually. I haven't checked fixtures. Maybe I should have done that before. Well, I haven't done the Arsenal transfer yet. Arsenal so. are playing Aston Villa. Oh, yeah. I'll get better in then. Um, yeah. Any thoughts about what you're going to do, Chuck? You've got Saïs as well. Are you keeping? Saïs, yeah, probably keep him, but I don't yeah? really have okay. any bench options now. I don't know what's going on with Rodriguez, if he still hurt his little testicles or not. Um, bruised testicle. No, thank you. Bruised testy. Sorry, is that actually what what it was? 
Yes, yeah. In that match where like Van Dyke got his leg done and that, that brutal like Liverpool Everton match where everyone was getting hurt, he got a bruised testicle. <laughs> I, did, I had not heard that. And the way you both said that so seriously, I was like, oh, that's that's actually what happened. Okay. That, yep. was, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was actually the oh, I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, perhaps to the best of us. <laughs> Does it? I think you're doing it wrong, bud. Oh, 3-1. Vardy's just scored again. The stats robots have just got Two another few points. <laughs> so stats robots will be in the 70s now? Yes, yeah, she will Fucking be in the 70s. Fucking transferred yeah. him out last week. I want to talk, do some listener things or something else. Do the buff. I don't fucking care. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Let's put Chuck out of his misery and uh, go on to the bluffer. So it's my turn to host this week. Uh, Chuck oh, is... One point up. There has only been one week of the bluffer. Oh, I don't care. Can we just stop it now? <laughs> lockdown. Stop. Can lockdown rules mean that you can't record podcasts as well? Uh, because talking into a microphone, you could transmit anything through the internet. That's how it works, right? 5G. The 5G carries oh, my spit. And... <laughs> Into and the asbestos of Peterborough amplifies the 5G. Sorry, Chuck, why, why are you upset with the bluffer now? What's... Why? Because I'm fine. I'm doing well in one thing, and I just like everything to end so that I can just. Have, oh, I thought you, can you only do well at one thing at a time? If you're winning the bluffer, uh, FPL goes down the shitter. What's? I don't it, know. It, no, no, because I'm winning now, and I know I won't. <laughs> wow, such <laughs> negativity. I don't know where this has come from. Okay, Chuck, you are one nil nil up in the bluffer. So uh, the bluffer is a competition where we have uh, three questions. Uh, we rotate the hosts each week, and uh, basically each question has multiple answers. The other two players bid on how many they can get in an auction style, and then eventually someone has to drop out, and the other person has to name all of the things that they've said they can. Uh, so Oscar's I've got put his hood up. Sorry, hmm? I'm scared. Oscar's put his hood up. I'm scared. I'm going to put my collar up. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I'm cheating. I have like all the answers coming in. <laughs> okay, oh, in the old earballs. <laughs> so, being as Chuck it's is <laughs> being as Chuck is uh, one point up, we we will say Oscar will have the first bid. And uh, Oscar, I've got three questions here. Do you want question one, two, or three? Uh, B, please. <laughs> right, brilliant, brilliant. Fuck, fucking love it. Okay, so this is Oscar's bid, and the question is. I want you to name all of the characters, playable or not, in Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, I've included Mortal Kombat 2 because there are some characters in there that uh, I thought needed to be. There are 20. So these are are characters you can play against or make appearances or play as. So Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2, there are 20 characters. How many can you name Oscar? I'm going to start off at five. Five. Okay. Okay. Seven. Oof. Seven. Leap That's how many I actually know. <laughs> uh, eight. Nine. Oof. So confident. So quick. Ten. Eleven. Go for it. <laughs> Thank God. I was like really worried you were going to call me at ten. Right. So Chuck has gone for. Chuck says he can name eleven. Uh, thanks to Jeff Pedder for inspiring this question, by the way. Oh, that's why he was saying, <laughs> get ready, Oscar. So, Chuck, you have said you can name 11 characters from Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2. So, yep. off you go. Liu Kang. Liu Kang. Sonya Blade. Sonya Blade. Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage. Raiden. Raiden. We are up to four. Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero. I'm just surprised you're not going in the same order as the song. What song? They say all the names in the song. Yeah, uh, but there's two versions of the song. Oh, okay. There's two versions of a song, I don't by know. Techno, by Techno Syndrome, the Mortal Kombat song. Mortal Kombat! Oh, well, it's all falling into place for me now. <laughs> and now I've completely lost where the fuck I was. <laughs> Right, uh, I won't. Right, I won't so, penalise. I won't penalise if you repeat. And that's okay. an episode uh, preview with no context, right there. If you can find that <laughs> and, and tweet it, that'd be great. <laughs> so you're up to six. I won't. I won't penalise if you repeat. Yeah, but I need to talk for him now again. Liu Kang, Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, Raiden, Scorpion, Sub Zero, Reptile. Reptile, correct. Reptile was a secret character in the first one. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. Shang, Shang Tsung. Shang Tsung. 
Goro. Goro, nine. Then in the second one, the main bad guy was Shao Kahn. Shao Kahn, good pull. Ten. And then I need to remember one more. Uh, oh, what's his name? Kano. Kano. Chuck gets to 11. Very push, good. Push. Uh, was Jax in there? Yeah, I was, I was. that's the only one I'm waiting on. Yep, Jax. Ermac. Ermac? I've not got Ermac. No. No. Oh, that might have been like Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 3. 3. Yeah. Who was the love interest in the uh, second movie? Oh, Kitana. Kitana. Kitana, Kitana yep. Yeah. Melina. Melina, yep. Yeah. You are well suited to this question. <laughs> I never had a shot. <laughs> yeah. Other ones you were missing were uh, Baraka. Baraka. Oh, uh, Obama. Yeah. That's where Obama got his name. Famously. Uh, Jade. Uh, Kintaro. Kung Lao, Noobs, Noob Saibot, noob, help me noob, out. Noob Saibot. Noob Saibot. <laughs> and Smoke. Smoke? Just Smoke, the word Smoke? Just Smoke. Yep. He was one of the ninjas. It was a, yeah, it was a, he made random appearances in Mortal Kombat 2. Okay. Uh, <laughs> side note, before we get back to recording, there it is the 83rd minute, and the score in my Fantrax matchup right now is 292.95 to 292.9. <laughs> And Oof. I'm losing. Oh. So I really hope Luke Ailing just does like a one successful pass in the next seven minutes. <laughs> or like nice. Literally anything. <laughs> like I just need a one twentieth of a point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we move on to Chuck's first bid. Uh, Chuck, would you like question one or question three? Um, three. Three. Okay. This is your bid then. Um, settle in. I want you to name as many as the of the eleven chemical components of air. Now they're not all elements, oh. uh, but they can all be expressed as chemical formulas. Uh, I.e., there's not like something stupid like smoke. They're they're all either elements or chemical compounds. There's eleven right. of them. This is the eleven most. Uh, what's the word? Abundant. Abundant. Thank you. Uh, right. <laughs> chemicals in the air, according to NASA. Uh, yeah. Now, Ian, I have a caveat question, though. No, of course he fucking does. Is this at sea level, or does this include the upper levels of the atmosphere? Like, define air. Air is a really... Yeah, what I got was was atmosphere. So, I mean, that's very very open. But what I will tell you, Oscar, is I will be incredibly lenient, okay? Four. Uh, Five. Six. Out of 11? Yeah. Science, bitch. (laughs) <laughs> I don't want to not take any categories, but I don't think you could name six out of the 11. I will say seven. I will say name seven, you bitch. Mm. I was punting with three of them. <laughs> yeah, I can't do seven. You're going to get this point. I'll tell you right now. Um, okay. We have hydrogen. Hydrogen. Oxygen. Oxygen. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Nitrogen. Nitrogen. The most abundant. Mm. Water. Water. Um, and this is where I start getting... Aroused. Harder. Uh, CH4. That is methane. methane? Yes. Correct. You've got one more to get. Oh. <laughs> Helium. Helium. Oscar, there you go. Nice science. Bitch. I was just trying to think of things that come out of the sun. There are four left. Uh, any any thoughts? Um, xenon is that in there? Yeah, Argon. it is. There's noble Argon. gases in there. Noble gases. Yeah, two more. Yeah, radon. No, no, neon, ozone. Um, no ozone. I would have allowed under oxygen because it's just. O three, 3 so. It's ionised oxygen, yeah. It's, it's not the same though, is it? It's not the same, but I said I was going to be lenient because of the loose form of the question. It's Chlorine? No, neon and krypton. Oh, okay, so it was uh, just noble gases. Oh, okay. It was cool. just noble I stopped, gases. Yeah. I, thought you, I stopped saying that because I thought you said there was no more. Oh, sorry. No, I didn't. So, yeah, that was a, a point to Oscar. So that allows us to have an incredibly uh, tense final one. So Oof. it is Oscar's first bid. To name mm. the top 25 goal scorers for club and country since the start of 2000, 
according to transfermarket.co.uk as of this summer. So basically, what I'm saying is you add up a player's club and country goals, top 25 goal scorers since the turn of the century. There's those five years that I don't know. Yeah, but I think because there's 20 years here, you're talking about legends, you're sort of... Yeah. You know. So you said there's 25? There's 25, yep. Yeah. Top 25 goal scorers for club and country Eesh. combined. Um, I will go seven. Seven? Fucking hell. That's, yes. That's high? High. You can't name like the seven most prolific people of the last 20 years? No. Oh, <laughs> shit talking. This is, this is a category that highly lends itself to... Guessing. Like, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Saying the wrong thing, I was going to say. Eight. Yeah. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, I know that's your lucky number. That, that is my lucky I number. I don't think you'll go any higher than that. Maybe, maybe so not. So you, you're thinking is it you're either naming 14 or mm. forcing him to do 13. Can you name he... the 14 players who have scored the most goals? Right now, I have years? three players in my head. <laughs> I really appreciate I, how high you've gone then, Chuck. I think that's... Uh, I said seven because I had seven that I'm reasonably confident about, but like... <laughs> to be commended. Oscar, name 13. Oscar has to name the 13... Well, 13 of the top 25 goal scorers, club and country combined since the start of the year 2000. Go slow, Oscar, because I've got to pull them. That's what she said. Uh, Lionel Messi. <laughs> Absolutely. He was one of my Cristiano three. Cristiano Ronaldo. Oscar has just named two of my three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Messi, Ronaldo, uh, Zlatan. That's the top three. Yep. <laughs> um, Lampard. Come on. Lampard's got to be top 25. He's like the third all-time Premier League goal scorer. Boom. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Lampard's not... He's one of the top Premier League goal scorers ever. How many, I'm so surprised. How many goals has Lampard got? 177 in the Premier League. 177 in the Premier League? How many does he score for England? I know. Uh, some. Uh, unless it's 120. <laughs> You're nowhere near. Oh. He did not score 120 goals. Can I keep going? I Obviously, Chuck gets the win, but can I try to keep going? It's really there. <laughs> Is Rooney there? Uh, do, 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 Yes, Rooney is twelfth. Alan Shearer. Nah, that's got to be before. Oh yeah, wait. Yeah, oh, since yeah, two thousand. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Lewandowski. Lewandowski is fourth. Yeah. Uh, um, Drogba. Drogba's there. Thirteen. Yeah. Drogba's really? there. Yeah, that makes sense. Van Persie. Yep, Robin Van Persie's twentieth. Thierry Henry. Nah, he might be before. No, Thierry Henry is 11th. Oh, there you go. Okay, Thierry Henry. He's very prolific. Um, Aguero. Aguero. Gotta be Aguero. Yeah, 6th. Sixth. 6th? Sixth? See, wow. you've got a lot since you went Lampard, man. I, I assumed Lampard would be there. It's frustrating. That's really frustrating. I should have just stuck to strikers. That's the, That was my mistake. I was like, the top midfielder ever has to definitely get some, but... Let's go through what we haven't got then. So 25th was uh, Dirk Kite. Uh, 20, oh. Yeah, 297 goals. Um, 24th was Raul. 23rd oh, was, I was going to say Raul. <laughs> 23rd was Neymar. 22nd was Hulk. 21 was Falcao. Uh, you got 20th, Robin Van Persie. 19th, Miroslav Klose. Oh. Hey, World Cup all-time goal scorer, Miroslav Klose. This is a good one. 18th, Edin Dzeko. Wow, 18. Yep, 334 goals in 697 appearances. Wow. Fucking hey, that's amazing. Yeah, 0.48 goals per game. Uh, 17th, Higuain. Um, fifth, uh, joint 15th, Benzema and Gomez. Ooh. Mario Gomez? Bafatimbi. Yeah. <laughs> Mario <laughs> Gomez has more goals than Miroslav Klose. I'm learning so many interesting things today. <laughs> Ian, this was a great question. I'm really happy you did this, even if I lost the point. Yeah, 14th you'll enjoy. Robbie Keane. Okay. <laughs> wow. Uh, Gareth Bale and Harry Kane. Nope. Neither? No way. Neither. Neither. Okay. 13th okay. was Drogba, you got. 12th was Rooney. 11th was Henri. Uh, then we get to 10th. Top 10 now. Uh, David Villa. 
Oh, duh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ninth, Edison Cavani. Okay. Torres? No, Torres not in there. Eighth is Klaas Jan... Klaas Jan Klaas Huntelaar. Jan Huntelaar. <laughs> Huntelaar. Uh, seventh is Samuel Eto. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then out of the top six, there's only one you didn't get. Uh, eventually, you got Aguero in six. And then the fifth one you didn't get was Luis Suarez. Oh, duh. Yeah. So really, there's only like three that you probably wouldn't think of there if you just thought of prolific cold people. I'm very glad I would have gone out many times. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't curse her. One, two, two. Oh, oh, oh. Bow. Right, so Chuck, you're hosting next week, so you have, you know, so, someone's always got to go. Someone send me them in, because I won't think of them for myself. Yeah, yeah sweet. <laughs> Direct message Chuck with some question ideas for me and Oscar. And I will be taking three categories next week, because Ian's notorious strategy of let me and Chuck lose on our Very own. Very defensive player. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It works. It works. Send me categories that massively favour Ian. <laughs> That I might actually take one on. <laughs> yeah. Right, so then we've got fixtures. Uh, we start on Friday with a double early kickoff. I don't understand it. There's not just the Friday early, but there's an earlier Friday one. So, yeah. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, like the FPL deadline is like 4pm or something ridiculous. Yeah, it'll be 4pm on Friday. Get your team set now, shit munchers. It's like 11am for you, Oscar. Yep, 11am in the US. So make sure you have that ready to go. That's probably quite a good deadline then. It's better than normal. I would hope you don't own many people from the Friday teams because it is Brighton, Burnley, Southampton and Newcastle. So no thank you other than Vestergaard. Bulk. Um, Alan San Maximan. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ever heard of him? <laughs> he got three points this week and is coming off my bed. Very nice. <sighs> yep. Then Saturday the 7th, we've got Everton, Man United, Crystal Palace, Leeds, Chelsea, Sheffield United and Western Fulham. <laughs> then on to Sunday, we have West Brom, Spurs, Leicester, Wolves, Man City, Liverpool. That one stuck in oh. there. Didn't know that was coming. No. no literally got it in front of me. Didn't realise. Um, <laughs> and Arsenal, Aston Villa. That's nice that... Of the four teams that we talked about with potential title hopes, or at least I'm the only one still saying that, uh, yeah. Chelsea are the only <laughs> ones that play Saturday, so they can set down a marker before the other three have to... One of the others is playing West Brom, so... That is true, and it's Spurs, so... Yeah, they... <laughs> West Brom just lost to Fulham, so I fully expect a West Brom 3-0 win there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's a quite a bit of a big bag. Oh. A few more fixes you can kind of get a bit excited about. Obviously, Man City, Liverpool, that could mean that uh, Liverpool go eight points clear of Man City. Um, God, Man City already. Would, yeah, Oof. again. So, or Man City could bring it to within two and then they still have a game in hand. So, this is huge. huge right, proper, yeah. Proper six, proper, proper six-pointer. They all are when teams play each other. Always. There's always a six-point <laughs> swing. That's how maths works. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> all right, before we move on, give me a solid prediction here. I want some on fucking paper or I guess on air. Give me a like score line. Who is winning? What is the you know the things <laughs> for specifically Man City Liverpool? Yes, Man City Liverpool. Oh, Sorry, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know words. I'm not good at those, but <laughs> Man City Liverpool. What's the score, Ian? I'll go to you first. Uh, I will say two-one uh, Liverpool. I don't fancy Liverpool to keep a clean sheet, but I do fancy him to win. So two-one Liverpool. Um, just because I want to say something different, I will say one nil. Liverpool. All right, and I'm going to be the only one who says that I think City are going to win. I'm going to give that a 2-0. Right, so it's a congratulations on the draw. Um, that about wraps us <laughs> up for this week. Thank you very, very much for listening. Get in touch with us on the socials. Um, big shout out, producer, girlfriend, have her, because I haven't said it this week, Nate Whitten for supporting <laughs> the pod. You can also support the pod at patreon.com <sighs> forward slash miles offside pod. Join us on the Slack. Get involved. Uh, you'll get all kinds of bonuses. If you are a listener in the UK, stay safe out there. Be prepared for lockdown two, electric boogaloo. And we will <laughs> still be here providing top quality audio content. Say goodbye, Oscar. Or at least audio content. I don't know about the quality. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> it will sound good. It will sound good. It will sound good because he's super producing. And it's <laughs> bye-bye from me. Take care. Love one another. Pray for everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>